Jesse Granger covers the Golden Knights for the Athletic out of Las Vegas. He joins us now, and I should start with this. I saw the photo of you that Clark put on our guest preview, James. Jesse, I didn't know you were a goaltender. I knew you were a cool guy. I didn't know you were that cool. What's the story on you be being between the pipes? Yeah, I've played goalie my whole life, pretty much. Um, since I was about, I don't know, five years old, I think. Uh, I've been playing goalie. I still play uh, men's league just three nights a week, um, <laughs> trying to stay young out there. And it's been fun. I've actually started writing a lot more about goalies. The Athletic has kind of given me a little bit more of a, of, a, of a leash to go national and write about goalies around the league, but obviously still cover the Golden Knights here in Vegas. Um, goaltending is my passion. All things goalies. I love it. Buddy. Me too. <laughs> Who's the number one goalie in the NHL in your mind? That is a great question. So I, I always <laughs> default to Andre Vasilevsky. He's, he's the, the man. He's got the cups. He's done it on the biggest stage. He didn't look himself last year, but I do think that Tampa Bay rushed him back from that back surgery a little bit. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. And if Andre Vasilevsky is still himself this year, he's the best goalie in the world to me. Um, if he's not, Igor Shosturkin is right on his heels, ready to take that mantle. So uh, I, I think both are outstanding, but th that would be my pick. Trust me, I get it. Both Russians. But you know what? So let's just segue that into the Vegas thing. They want a Stanley Cup without... Anybody even in the conversation, not even in the top 10, I wouldn't think. I'm sure you'd agree with that. How, how did they do that? How do they continue to be a contender without a top flight goaltender, do you think? Well, so I, I agree with you that they didn't have a goalie in the top 10. I don't know if Aiden Hill's a top 10 goalie, but he played like a top 10 goalie. So you, you can win a cup without great a great goalie, but whoever, whatever goalie you have to have or whatever goalie you have has to play great in order for you to win. And Aiden Hill certainly did that. I think a 933 save percentage in that playoffs. And Aiden Hill's a guy that I think the reason we don't consider him one of the best is because he's, he's always hurt. He hasn't been able to make it through a full regular season as the guy. But when he's healthy, and specifically when he's been healthy in Vegas, he has been excellent. And like even in last year's playoffs, um, they obviously lost in the first round to Dallas. But he was thrown into the middle of that series with no practice time, coming off of an injury, and had a 931 save percentage. He was awesome. So I do think that while the Golden Knights maybe don't have a traditional elite goalie, I think that when Aiden Hill is at his best and healthy, he is more than good enough to win a cup. And I think that part of what goes into that is the structure around him, because goalies rely so much on the team in front of them, and I, I always argue that goalie stats are more indicative of the team in front of them than they are the actual goalie themselves. And I think that Bruce Cassidy has a phenomenal, maybe the best in the NHL, defensive system that they play zone defense, they box out, there's layers, it's hard to get to the front of the net against the Vegas Golden Knights, so you end up taking a bunch of shots from the outside because you get frustrated trying to get inside, you just give up on it eventually, you take a bunch of shots from the outside, and that's how the goalie ends up with a 930 save percentage because it's easy to stop those shots. So I think it's a combination of... Aiden Hill is very, very good when he's at his best. We just haven't seen him at his best all that often because he's always hurt. Um, and the defensive system in front of him is, is very friendly to the goalies. I think it makes their jobs easy. Imagine if Marc-Andre Fleury got to play in the Cassidy system, but it doesn't matter now. We are a headline reading society now, Jesse. We don't go too deep into the stories. We just see the headlines. So I saw this headline about an ugly split with Jonathan Marcheseau and the Golden Knights. Was it as ugly as the headline I read? Or what, take me inside that, if you don't mind. Yeah, I, so Jonathan Marcheseau has said a few things publicly that have kind of led to everyone thinking it's ugly. Jonathan Marcheseau just likes to talk. And he's an honest guy. He, he, he tells you what's on his mind. I don't think it's that ugly. I just think Jonathan Marshall says a fiery guy, and he wanted to stay in Vegas. He wanted to retire a Golden Knight. He loves it here. This this city made his career like he was he was trying to find his footing in the NHL, and he had that big season with Florida, the thirty goals. But prior to that, the guy had been bouncing around. Like I don't think a lot of people. I think a lot of people don't realize how much Jonathan Marshall had to fight to be a full time NHL player, and then it, it happened here in Vegas, and he saw this as home. He wanted to retire here. He would have taken any reasonable deal, I think, to stay in Vegas. But I don't blame the Golden Knights for not wanting to sign him until he's into his mid to late 30s. So I see both sides of, of the argument. I think the Golden Knights had a good reason to not want to sign him to a long-term deal. So I see both sides of it. I don't think it's I don't think Jonathan Marshall so hates the Vegas Golden Knights, but I just think that 
he would have rather stayed here. So if you ask him on a radio show, he's going to tell you exactly how he feels. And, and I, most players probably wouldn't be as honest. So I think that it ends up becoming this story of, oh, it's a, it's a really nasty split. When actually, it just didn't work out for both sides. And Marcia says a little more uh, forthcoming with his thoughts than most players are. Well said, Jesse. Um, listen, Vegas will go down in history as perhaps the most successful expansion team of all time in any league. And the reason I bring that up is um, our poll question today on this program is, will, will Quebec City ever get a team? Uh, Quebec City is hosting the Kings and Bruins tonight, uh, trying to showcase their city to the NHL. John in Calgary writes in, he says, Quebec will get a team after it fails in Atlanta. I don't know, man. You are in this NHL fraternity of the media there with the athletic. What do you? There's so much talk about expansion right now. I don't really know why. I almost feel like somebody's putting it out there. But do you see this league going to 34, 36 teams? And if so, who do you think they may be? Well, I think the reason we see, we hear so much expansion, and this is not insider knowledge. This is just me looking at what's happening and speculating. I think. The owners really like expansion fees. Um, it's, it's a huge sum of money that they get that they don't really have to do anything to earn. And the most important thing, they don't share it with the players. So all revenue that the hockey creates is shared between the Players Association and the owners. Well, expansion fees go straight to the owner's pocket. They don't have to share any of it with the players. And I think that the reason we're maybe hearing expansion so much now is we've got a new CBA agreement coming up. And... I'm going to assume that after all these expansions and after all these players seeing this money that these owners are getting, that Bill Foley paid for Vegas, that Seattle paid, the players are going to say, you know what, I think we need a piece of that. So I would imagine that in this next CBA agreement, the players are probably going to negotiate for a, a piece of that pie, however big or small it becomes. So if you're the owners, well, if we're going to expand, we better do it before the CBA because we get 100% of the expansion fee. So that, that would be my guess as to why. Um, we're hearing so much expansion talk in a league that I don't know if it, if, if it needs expansion in terms of the players, like the product becoming watered down. But there are cities that, that it seems like it could work. So I don't know. I'm not for or against expansion, but I think that that's a big reason why we're hearing so much of the talk is maybe getting it done before that CBA. Yeah, I'm exactly with you. Look how great it's been in Vegas. Look how great it's been in Seattle. I think it could be great in these other markets. So why the hell not? I'm not against it either. But I, again, I just wonder what, where it's coming from and why. And you've explained that pretty well. Jesse, I love your stuff, man. I always enjoy chatting with you. Thanks for uh, uh, coming on. And don't take any pucks to the head, my guy. I'll try. Thanks for having me. Jesse Granger from The Athletic, Las Vegas. Goalie Union. Didn't even know. Till today.